Hey everybody, CVH here, and today we're going to be doing some speculation. You may or may not have seen the announcement on Reddit regarding some cards in Heroes of Skyrim by Solid Age from Bethesda, but it's in front of you right now, so now you have seen it, and it alludes to some possible card changes coming up. As you can see here, let's read it together, we're incredibly excited to see how popular Skyrim has been with the community, uh, Heroes of Skyrim that is. We knew people would love to play with some of the favorite characters, but it has surpassed our expectations, so we want to take a quick moment to say thank you uh, to the awesome members of our community who have experienced Heroes of Skyrim, and yada yada. One of the things a digital card game allows us to do is adjust cards on the fly. We've been pretty vocal about tapping into this with Legends. For those of you who don't know, um, back in the open beta they did quite a few uh, rounds of nerfs which were very helpful for the game I would say and we're always looking at the metagame and data behind the scenes to see how we can make adjustments for the health of the game. I'm not going to go into detail in this post but wanted to drop a quick note to the community that we're currently looking at adjusting the following cards incoming patches and then it lists Praetorian Commander, Echoes of Akatosh, or Echo of Akatosh, uh, Bringer of Nightmares, all three of those from the recent Heroes of Sky Skyrim expansion, and Belligerent Giant. So wow, um, a lot of uh, interesting stuff we could think about regarding the potential nerfs that are becoming to these cards. Obviously, I don't think any of them are going to see buffs, uh, but card changes means they're probably going to try to keep the power level uh, somewhat intact, maybe change some around. It leaves a lot to the imagination. So in today's video, uh, besides letting you guys know that this was potentially in the works, I wanted to take a little bit of time and speculate on these four cards and, and bounce around a couple ideas for potential card changes or nerfs to them. Uh, but yeah, I think this is basically a great sign for the game. Uh, Long-time players such as myself, like I said, will know that Direwolf Digital and Bethesda aren't shy about changing cards. They've done a handful of nerfs um, and some buffs as well. Uh, cards like Manticore have seen changes, Murkwater Savage, Werebat, Crystal Tower Crafter, Slaughterfish Spawning, Dark Rift. Major players in the metagame from the time when I first got into the game about a year ago have been changed when it was necessary, and they're not afraid to really keep a close eye on the health of the game. So regardless of the changes that happen to these cards, uh, I think this is a positive sign. And if you're out there wondering if Bethesda and Direwolf care about the game, I would just look to this announcement to show that, yeah, they are taking a good look at what the community is having a problem with. So without further ado, let's get this off the screen and talk about some of the cards themselves. And let's start with the big daddy of cards people dislike, Echo of Akatosh. In my Heroes of Skyrim uh, intelligence review, I think I called Echo of Akatosh the most universally disliked card I've ever seen in Elder Scrolls Legends, and I would still stand by that today. Uh, 6 drop 5 5 giving a Mundestone effect to every creature in your deck. People, regardless of whether or not the power level is too high, uh, people are really not a fan of these deck buffs. Now, I personally don't mind cards that buff your entire deck. I think implemented correctly, they could be pretty fun, but clearly people are not a fan of how they've implemented them in this set regarding Echo of Akatosh and Praetorian Commander, which is why they are two of the cards we just read on that list. So, how could they change Echo of Akatosh? Now, I've been a kind of a defender of this card. That's not to say I like the card design, I just don't think it's quite as powerful as many people have said it is, but granted, it is quite unfun to, as an, as an, to lose to as a new player. Uh, because as a new player, you don't really understand, maybe you could have pressured your opponent, you can't really expect new players with their new decks to be able to do that. And yeah, a new player with a new deck and unrefined strategy is probably going to lose to most good players with refined decks. Matchmaking is supposed to help that. But if they lose to a good player with Echo of Akatosh, they're not going to learn anything from that game. They're simply going to see that they lost to basically the equivalent of a Hearthstone card. So while I don't think this card is quite as big of a problem competitively as many people think there that it is uh, in relation to a couple other cards on this on this list actually, uh, I won't be sad to see it go if it does go. Uh, so what could they do to change this card? Uh, the obvious thing is to nerf the effect into Oblivion, which again I wouldn't be sad to see because while I don't think the power level is crazy high, I don't really think this kind of effect is something we should make a habit of including in Legends, which is trying to distance itself from the competitors in the card game market by being very skillful. Uh, while it might not see a whole lot of competitive play, uh, it does impact a good amount of games on the ladder, which I'm sure is one of the strats, one of the stats they're tracking that they mentioned on the Reddit post. So potentially you could just say summon, give each creature in your hand a random keyword, or you could just say any creature you summon 
gets a random keyword, which would mean uh, when Echo of Akatosh is silenced or removed from the board, that effect no longer persists. So yeah, the fact that Echo of Akatosh is not super hard to remove would come back to bite it. Now, I don't think this card would be remotely playable with either of those effects, but it's kind of hard to take this exact effect and put it on a card to where it's both healthy for the game and playable. I think if you're going to print cards like this with that crazy of a random effect, they're probably better to verge on unplayable than competitively viable. And while I don't think this card is super competitively viable in its current form, it is more so now than if they did either of those things to it. So they could nerf the stats, they could just increase the cost, or they could change the effect to be something a lot more reasonable, but also pretty bad. Because if they keep the effect like this, they really have to make it a lot more unplayable, because that's why we're fine with cards like Wabajack and Mundestone, because while they're incredibly wacky, we don't anticipate they're going to make a huge impact in a lot of high-level games. So that's Echo of Akatosh, and let's piggyback off of that one and move on to the other deck buff that may in fact see a nerf. And that is Praetorian Commander, giving all creatures in your deck plus two, plus two. Now granted, Praetorian Commander does have minus two, minus two compared to Echo of Akatosh, uh, but I think this card really surprised a lot of people. Mentioned it in my underrated cards video. Not so much because it's underrated anymore, but because initially it was. This card is incredibly powerful. Uh, a lot more so than Echo of Akatosh. Um, plus two, plus two is objectively better than the random keyword you're getting. Um, the stats just really matter when you're pushing damage, when you're being defensive, just taking over the board makes everything really hard to kill, especially when you lower all an echo and get something like regenerate. In combination, the cards are incredibly scary, and I'm sure that's what the stats they're looking at are going to tell them. A lot of people just jamming a bunch of prophecies and a bunch of removal into a deck with three commanders, three echoes, calling it a day, and just letting the creatures themselves at that point get the job done. So I do think Commander, if one of these cards was going to see a huge amount of competitive play, not that either of them is going to be crazy, but if we had a tournament tomorrow, a big competitive tournament with like a big cash prize or something, I could see Commander seeing a lot more play than Echo, potentially outside of those decks. The effect is just incredibly powerful, and yeah, you can sort of mid-range or tempo your opponent down, punish them for playing a 6-drop 3-3, and I don't think this card is ridiculously insane, as a lot of people do, but yeah, losing in that manner when you don't have the tools to tempo your opponent down, uh, there should be, I think, a way that feels better to lose to, besides just, oh, everything in my opponent's deck is big. Whether or not this card is ridiculously overpowered, I guess we could debate that. I don't think it's ridiculous, uh, but one thing is for sure, it is quite boring. Palaciously boring. It's just not very fun and interactive to lose to cards that are just, uh, buffed beyond reason. That said, uh, they could, in fact, keep this effect, I think. Whereas... Echo, I'm more of a, a a fan of changing the effect to be something more in line with what Legends wants to do. I don't particularly mind the nature of this effect. Uh, I just think they should maybe tone down its power level. One way to do that is to just simply up its cost. We see that with a lot of cards. Make it a 7 cost instead of a 6 cost. All of a sudden, you still get punished uh, for playing it on curve. Now you're just getting punished a bit more. And of course, the commander's effect necessitates that you actually have time to draw creatures afterwards, so it sets the whole process back another turn. You're playing a 7-drop 3-3, which is way worse than a 6-drop 3-3, which is already pretty awful by itself, just punishing you that much more for playing the card in the first place. And then you're also one turn behind the first time you draw a plus 2, plus 2, so it makes it that much less exciting to get that effect rolling. It takes forever, and it just be, it makes you able to punish it that much more. I have seen other changes proposed that you could simply have the effect, give creatures in your deck plus one, plus one. I think that would probably need to be accompanied with a reduced cost. All of a sudden, maybe it's a five drop, three, three that gives everything plus one, plus one. Again, you could have it just affect cards in your hand. I'm curious to see which direction they take this, but on the on the surface, I wouldn't mind a very simple nerf of simply upping the magic cost by one. I think that would probably get the job done and cause it to see a substantial um, amount, a decrease in play. So moving on, I think we are now going to go back to intelligence and talk about Bringer of Nightmares. Now this is a hell of an RNG effect, I'll tell you. Six drop, four, four, see a vision of a random creature, then you must choose a creature to transform into it. Talked about this card a lot, how it took a lot of people by surprise. Wabajack on a stick with much better control over the outcome. Um, not necessarily the card you're picking, because it shows you a random creature in the game, which is the problem, uh, but then you get to choose whether or not you're giving it to your opponent, and whether or not you're giving it to yourself, and what creature you're transforming. You have a lot of control over this incredibly wide scope of an RNG effect. Uh, so I've always said, since the set released, uh, after like a day or so of thinking about the cards, 
that if there was a big tournament tomorrow, yet again, uh, I think Bringer of Nightmares is probably the scariest card for that. I think it is the widest scope RNG card from the set that would see a substantial amount of play in a variety of decks. Now, the metagame is still settling, and it's not like a guaranteed slot in every single blue deck by any stretch, but it would, I think, impact a substantial amount of games, and not in a way that is very fun. Uh, it just pops out random creatures that are huge and impossible to beat sometimes, and uh, even when it's bad, it's not even really that bad. It's just like a reasonable silence or removal effect. Using this on Nahagleeb is a good example, because it's a body that comes down at around the same time you can play Bringer, and you can just use it to turn their really hard-to-remove guy into an average creature. That's not so much of a problem as when it pops out something completely unbeatable. As you've even seen on this channel when it gave me an Alduin on, I think it was turn 7 or 8 or something like that. So yeah, things can get pretty insane with Bringer of Nightmares. And I think the most appropriate nerf that I've seen suggested numerous times to Bringer of Nightmares uh, is probably to give it the Balmora Spymaster effect. Um, and why don't we see Balmora Spymaster in a lot of decks? Why isn't it crazy? Well, because it simply cannot give you something unreasonably large very early. You can't play this on 2, pop it on turn 3, and bring out a Parthrenax or a Manticora. It's just not possible because you're limited by the amount of max magicka you have. So that effect of Bringer of Nightmares wouldn't be as powerful, but you'd still have a lot of utility. You could use something tiny like a Shrieking Harpy. You know, turn six, you're very likely to get something powerful off of it still. Um, something more powerful than a 2-1, that is. You could use it with something that has been damaged through trading, something that's already gotten its effect like the Harpy, and you could still use it as a powerful removal option. On turn six, it might even be potentially better as a removal option if you're focused and you need to use it as removal on your opponent's large threat, like say their Odoving or something. The fact that you're not going to get something else humongous out of it uh, if you don't have that much magic. Well, Odoving's a bad example because you already have a ton of magicka. Let's say they do play the Naha Gleave. On turn seven, uh, you have seven max magicka. Uh, you are not going to be able to get something larger than Naha Gleave. So if you absolutely need to remove their guy, you can be sure that it's going to be something that costs less than the original thing. Uh, so it gives it a little more consistency as removal. Uh, but of course, you don't have that high roll option of saying, oh, all of a sudden it gave me Aldo and I can't just give it to myself instead and win the game because Bringer of Nightmares did something absolutely completely uncounterable. So I think the Balmora Spymaster effect is a good way to deal with this card without completely changing Changing it. I'd love to hear your opinions on that one because it's very interesting. Now we move on to strength and we see the one card on the list of four that didn't come out of Heroes of Skyrim. Belligerent Giant has been a true powerhouse of Legends for about as long as I can remember. Obviously a little bit less insane comparatively when there were a lot more cards that hadn't been yet nerfed that have been nerfed over the past giant amount of time since I started playing this game. Uh, the stats obviously not great but a humongous tempo swing attached to a large attack value that your opponent will probably have to deal with, with the added bonuses of dealing with supports and having breakthrough. This card, for a lot of new players, again, is not the most fun to see because you spend your max magicka playing this one huge creature that you just finally got out of a pack, you're really happy about it, you're really proud of it, all of a sudden they just giant back, and not only is it not on the board, but you just don't have time to replay it because the giant's probably going to kill you if your opponent has been aggressive up to that point. This is a very interesting one because I think there are a lot of ways to tone down this card without killing it, and you could do this in a variety of ways. You could up the cost from 7 to 8 cost, I think that would significantly impact it. You could reduce its stats, you could either reduce its attack or its health. It's already pretty fragile for a 7-drop at a 7-4. Well, very fragile for a 7-drop at 7-4. Uh, you could make it pack less of a punch at 6. You could make it Ice Stormable or Crushing Blowable by a 7-3. You could do both if you found it necessary. Uh, you could remove the ability to destroy an enemy support, which would limit its versatility, but I kind of like that it's a very versatile card. I think that makes it interesting uh, and fills sort of a unique role. Uh, I think that would be more of an annoying fix to the card. I don't really think that would impact the the reason people don't like it either. I think, you know, 90% of the, chi the time at least you're using it to bounce something. Uh, they did, in fact, just stealth buff this card by allowing it with other cards to return your own stuff to your hand. If you want to reuse a summon effect, you can do that. I don't like the idea of removing that. I think that's a cool add-on to the card, uh, and I, I think the effect should basically stay as it is. One other thing they could do is remove Breakthrough, and that gives a nod to Unstoppable Rage, which is another long-time disliked card by many people. I personally don't hate it too much, but you see a lot of Belligerent Giants and a lot of Unstoppable Rage decks because 
Lidra and Giants, a fantastic card by itself, and the Breakthrough makes it one of the prime targets along with its high attack value for the Unstoppable Rage. So if they nerf the attack value, or if they just simply remove Breakthrough from the card, that could be a sort of a stealth nerf to Unstoppable Rage without actually touching Rage. Which they might do down the road, I don't know, I don't really think it needs to be done, but it wasn't on the list of four cards they showed us. So maybe they're treating it like that. Uh, Belligerent Giant has never been a card that has been truly oppressive to me, uh, but there are a lot of ways to tone it down to where a lot of people complain about it less. You can make it less of a threat, you can make it more vulnerable to things, you could remove Breakthrough, you could up the cost. I'm not entirely sure how they should approach this card, but I wouldn't mind a bit of an attack, uh, attack nerf or a health or attack nerf or a cost increase. Another thing you could do to this is give it the Manticora effect, uh, or the Manticora restriction rather. And if you guys don't know, a long time ago, many months ago in open beta, Manticora used to be able to target enemy creatures in either lane regardless of where the Manticora was put into play. And uh, while it limited Manticora greatly, it did continue to see play. I don't know if I love that effect on Belligerent Giant, as a primarily aggressive tool, I think it would affect Belligerent Giant much more negatively than Manticora, because if you're forced to put this in the field lane, its vulnerability at only a 4 health creature makes it so easy to kill. Maybe that's exactly what they want to do to it though. Maybe that's a fine nerf. Uh, I'm worried about the playability of the card if they do that to it, but I think there's a lot of different things they could do. And as always, this is just my opinion. I would love to hear yours. So more than other videos, for sure, if you have an opinion on these nerfs, these potential nerfs, these speculations, uh, or you have your own nerfs that you want to propose, feel free to leave a comment and join the conversation. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like. Feel free to stay subscribed to the channel for more Legends content every day and follow my stream in the description. I'm looking forward to seeing what these nerfs potentially become. And I'll see you guys next time.